What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today we're checking out Zorin OS 9. Now Zorin OS is one of those distributions that is geared towards new users with a Windows-esque interface. It's not limited to a Windows-esque interface as you can change it up to look like a normal Linux distribution, GNOME, or maybe Mac OS, or an older version of Windows if you so desire. With all that said, the newest version of course being version 9 is based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu. 14.04. So it's going to be supported with updates for it for quite some time. So if you are a person that enjoys the Zorin OS distribution and enjoys a Windows-esque interface with plenty of quality free software installed by default, then it's time to upgrade because Zorin OS 9 is here. So today we're going to have a look at that one. The core edition is of course downloadable for free from their website, but if you do have a couple of euros lying around that you want to give to the project, it might be worth it. But that's something I'll leave you to decide. Let's take a look at Zorin OS 9. All right, so Zorin OS 9 is a distribution that is unashamedly going after a Windows look and feel. Now for new users, this is a great booster for their confidence when it comes to using a new operating system. And I've got to be honest, when comparing Zorin OS 9 with Windows 8.1 being the latest stable from Windows, it's actually going to be easier for a new user to jump into Zorin OS 9 than it is going to be for them to use Windows 8.1. So I guess contrasting to most other distribution reviews that I'm doing, today I'm just going to be taking a look at some of the features that Zorin OS 9 offers and comparing them and contrasting them against what is available on Windows 8.1 because this distribution is geared towards those who are wanting to come over from the Windows camp. Now along the way, because I have been using Linux for a while, I'm going to comment on the things that I personally like. And then also let me know in the comments below whether you would like to see a using Zorin OS series where I kind of take this distribution from where it is now as a vanilla install and tweak it out and start using it uh, and start showing off some of the apps in it. So this is Zorin OS Core 9 and this is the version that is freely available. And the Ultimate just has a lot more apps pre-installed and also a few tweaks in the middle that kind of flesh out things like the look and feel, what you can make the distribution look like, etc. It's just got all the bells and whistles. But I'm going to be taking a look at the core because this is what's freely available. And then if you like what you see, you can go and pay the 15 Australian dollars or so to go and buy the Ultimate Edition. Certainly not a bad idea, but enough about that. Let's talk about Zorin OS Core 9. Well, first of all, the user interface is different from anything else that you're going to see on the Linux side of things because it does look like Windows 7. We have a panel on the bottom here that acts pretty much as you'd expect. You have all of your options running along the side here that are usually in the top right-hand corner of any normal Ubuntu desktop. And then you have the task manager and some shortcut icons over here on the left-hand side, along with the start menu. Now, first of all, with this user interface, it is based off Windows 7, and thus it already is easier to understand than 8.1 with its start tile menu interface thing that comes up that's more oriented towards touch displays. Now, I will say that this menu isn't bad by any stretch, but sometimes it can feel a little bit clunky and not the quickest when it comes to searching. As you can see, it takes a little while for the menu options to show up. It's not quite as instantaneous as I'd like. And also it doesn't really apply to documents that might be on my computer as well. I guess ideally what I'm saying here is I'd like to see a keyboard driven menu where I can just enter in anything I like and it will start coming up with the results instantly as far as apps, email contacts, documents that I've been working on, photos, videos, etc. But as far as an application launcher, it does the job and it's pretty easy to see what you've got pre-installed. So let's run through those really quickly. We've got pretty much the standard set of tools you would expect to see. Archiving, backups, calculator, character map, disk utilities, file managers, fonts, screenshots, searching, terminal and text editor. Under games, we've just got a handful of simple games there. Under graphics, we have the GIMP as well as LibreOffice Draw and, photo, and the photo manager called Shotwell. And we also have a few tools there like the document viewer, image viewer, and simple scan. And then under internet, because we skipped one, uh, we've got the desktop sharing utility, which is great for when you're out and about and need to remote into your desktop. We've also got the empathy instant messaging client, which is pretty much the standard on most GNOME based distributions nowadays. And we've also got Thunderbird Mail and the Zorin Web Browser Manager. Now, funnily enough, the Firefox Web Browser isn't actually in here, even though it's pre-installed on the system. The Zorin Web Browser Manager just helps you to install other web browsers. And again, this is something that Windows 8.1 does not offer. So the 
ticks definitely go to Zorin OS 9 because it gives you the option of what web browser you want to use. Yes, it does bundle Firefox, an open source web browser, but it does give you options to use Google Chrome, Opera or Midori, whereas Windows 8.1 just gives you Internet Explorer and hopes you never learn about any other browsers. We have the standard LibreOffice suite, which is a perfect replacement for Microsoft Office, except for the fact that the compatibility can be a little shonky. It's getting better and better, but here in Zorin OS 9, it looks perfectly at home, and this is a more than capable Office suite if you're not looking to collaborate too closely with a Microsoft Office related workspace. Under sound and video, we've got a few different options here. We've got the Rhythmbox music player, think iTunes. We've got videos, which is a standard video player. And Zorin OS 9 can play all of your media files and all of that fun stuff straight out of the box. We also have a cheese webcam booth, open shop video editor, think iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. And we also have a disc burner there as well. System tools, a few standard things, including the Zorin look changer, which then you can change your distribution to look like Windows XP, or maybe even GNOME 2 if you're much more used to Linux, which is what I would do. And all of these are fairly instantaneous with their changes as well. As you can see, the Windows XP looks a little weird because the task panel takes up the entire panel for each window that you have open. So that's a little weird. I think that might, must be some sort of bug, but GNOME 2 looks as it should and as GNOME 2 did back in the golden years. Now we've also got a theme manager here which you can change between Zorin Light, Zorin Blue and Zorin Dark. Zorin Dark is a pretty dark theme as you can see here. It's got black and blue and nice highlights all over and I think this is the part of the video where I will comment on the look and feel of the distribution. I've got to say Zorin OS has really honed their look and feel over the last distribution, over the last few releases of their distribution. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. Yes, it is very blue. So if you don't like the color blue, then you might have to look elsewhere. But having said that, it's very clean, very clear, very sharp, and the visibility is fantastic, no matter whether you're using the dark blue, the dark, or the light theme. And if you can pull those darker themes off successfully, which Zorin OS have done, then you're in good hands. Now Wine is also pre-installed here along with Play on Linux and these programs essentially help you run Windows software uh, on a Linux based distribution, whether it be games, uh, an Adobe suite or Microsoft Office, you can generally get the older versions of these programs running in Linux using Wine and Play on Linux. Play on Linux is basically a streamlined way of going about it and it will step you through the process of what you need to do to get it running. Now for any other software that you want to install on this distribution, the Software Center is your friend. Basically you come in here and you can install any number of apps or pieces of software that you like and you can see some of the recommendations that the, that the Ubuntu team, as it is based on Ubuntu 14.04, have made for you. So I guess in summary, if you're new to Linux, then this is probably one of the most highly recommended distributions that I could possibly give. Its stability and its overall polish is up there with Linux Mint. And while it isn't as flexible or as customizable as what Linux Mint offers, it's definitely a viable replacement for Windows. And some of the app choices and design choices that they've made in their desktop really gives this distribution a lot of credence with the new Linux user community. So what do you think about these Windows-esque distributions? Obviously with Windows 8 evolving the way it is, it's kind of interesting to see that a distribution like Zorin OS 9 is actually more similar to what people are used to with Windows than Windows 8. So if you know new users who are a bit intimidated by Windows 8, or they just simply don't want to spend the money to update, then definitely show them Zorin OS 9 and see what they think. It's a nice, easy to use, easy to set up distribution that's ready to go as soon as you plonk it down on the hard drive. So it's generally a go-to distribution for most new users that I encounter, but also any new machines that I get or want to test, I can just plonk it on there and get to work straight away. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. I am on all three of those, so you can connect with me there. And also, if you did like this video or it helped you out, then hit the thumbs up button because it does help out the channel and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. Well, I will see you all again next time. We're gonna be having a look at a few more Linux distributions. Also, we're gonna be having another review of a designer watch from Tokyo Flash Japan. So stay keen for that, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.